In this video, we are going to get lost in the sauce. Imagine, right? Put on your creative hat right now. Imagine if you had a website with 8 million, 8 million visitors per month. And then Google puts out an update and see you later. Half that traffic is gone and then some. What would you do? Your income, a large income gets chopped in half just like that because of an update. Well, that's exactly what happened to Tony Hill. I'll have a um, link to the video on Niche Pursuits. He did an interview here, and I've seen his blog posts in some of these forums, these community forums that I'm involved in. He was able to recover all of that traffic, 4 million plus visitors per month, and then some, using the tactics, some of the tactics I'm gonna show you in this video. But I have to warn you, you will get lost in the sauce here. And what I mean by that is we are going to fly very close to the sun. The sun being Google's algorithm. We're going to try to get as close to it as possible to see how we can get more traffic to our websites to rank higher, to make more money online. Now, Tony was able to explain like over 30 things in the forums. He has a list of like over 30 things he did. He experiments a lot, but there is one thing, maybe two things in particular that tie together that really interest me and it has to do with the words on the screen the actual words you write on your blog because that's what google dissects and figures out should we rank this number one number two number three compared to competitors compared to backlinks you know domain authority all these things but the words the words are what matter so we're going to jump into what is called google's salient score it's part of their api this stuff is nutty and it's really really cool so here we are at google cloud this is our first stop in an exploration of SEO AI. Choose from over 150 cutting edge products. What is this? Did you know that Google is more than just a search engine? Google takes all the information that we give it through queries. It takes all the information through blog posts that we give it through Wikipedia user generated content and wraps it up into a bow in the form of Google Cloud APIs so developers can come in, click here and create cool things. Build generative AI applications quickly and responsibly powered by Google's most advanced technology. Before ChatGPT came around, Google has been, been doing this for years. And you might have seen tools that could do blogs automatically. What were they using? They weren't using OpenAI's ChatGPT, they were using things like this. Google has APIs you can plug into and they've had it for years. So what does this matter? How did Tony Hill use some of these concepts for his own good to recover 4 million plus in traffic per month? So if we go a little further down the rabbit hole, we are on the natural language AI portion of Google Cloud. Derive insights from unstructured text using Google machine learning. What does that mean? Well, this is an API you can plug into, but here's something super cool. Try the API. Hello? You can type in text here for free and Google's going to give you salient scores upon entities. What does that mean? Well, let's just do it first and find out. So to begin, we're going to start very simple and we're going to get more sophisticated as we go on. So here's the first example sentence. Here's one that is going to counter that. And we're going to see which one is better. Which one would rank for what keywords better? That's, that's the whole question, right? These are just two sentences. So the Eiffel Tower is an extremely popular tourist attraction in Paris. Great. Yes, it is. In Paris, there are many tourist attractions, including the renowned Eiffel Tower. Now, can you guess which one is better for what? Well, let's look. We can look at two examples here. So on the screen, we have the first one. In Paris, there are many tourist attractions, including the renowned Eiffel Tower. Now look at the entities, and they have a salient score under each of them. Paris has a salient score of 0 0.56, 1.00 0 .00 being very, very high. Next is tourist attraction, salience of 0.27, and the Eiffel Tower has a 0.12. Now, that could be a problem. If we're talking about the Eiffel Tower and the salient score for the Eiffel Tower is a 0.12, what could we have done to make it better? Well, let's look at the first example, right? So the Eiffel Tower is an extremely popular tourist attraction in Paris. The Eiffel Tower in this, this entity, which we'll get into, has a salient score of 0.9. Excellent. Excellent. That matters a lot. Paris, on the other hand, has a salient score of 0.1. We are talking about the Eiffel Tower in this article. If we were, what one is better? Which sentence is better? Well, the one that starts 
with the words Eiffel Tower. It doesn't bury the lead. If you're part of the masterclass, you'll know this is already incorporated into every section of how we write a blog article, right? Why? Because it matters. Google's showing us it matters. Now we're gonna do a super cool experiment with ChatGPT here in a second, but before we do, we can't get ahead of ourselves. Salience, what does it mean according to Google, right? We're on Google Cloud. The salience score associated with an entity ranges from zero to 1.0. I told you that, but what does it mean? The salience score for an entity, and an entity is like an object, a place, a thing, provides information about the importance of centrality of that entity, right, to the entire document text. Scores closer to zero are less salient, scores close to one are high salient. What does that mean? If we're trying to rank a keyword, Eiffel Tower, high saliency matters a lot. A 0.9 is way better than, what was it, a 0.27? Are we talking about Paris? Are we talking about tourist attractions? Or are we talking about our keyword, the Eiffel Tower? Whatever your keyword is, you can push it into this tool and see what your saliency is for actually like a large body of text. But let's do an experiment. Let's see how ChatGPT can do, if I request of it, make this better saliency for a specific keyword. Let's see what it does. So here's two paragraphs. I asked ChatGPT to write us just a paragraph on the Eiffel Tower, right? And that's the green one. This one here, I asked it, please rewrite the green one, right? Please rewrite this and make it a high saliency score for a keyword, which in this case, we're going after Eiffel Tower. Now, this is going to be a cool experiment. Let's just see if we can request of ChatGPT to make our articles better for saliency. Let's see. So here's the first example without any request of ChatGPT aside from just write about the Eiffel Tower. And you'll notice the entities, right? Because it's more than one sentence. There's a lot more. There's people, there's others such as height, there's locations, which we have right here, right? The Eiffel Tower has a salience of 0 0.05. That's very bad. What other things is this potentially ranked for? Tourist attractions, 0.19. The first examples, those sentences, those saliences were way more because it was just one sentence, very focused one sentence. When you give it a blurb of text, it's a different story. Now, let's go to this one. This is the one where we requested of ChatGPT to make it better. And as you can see, the Eiffel Tower salience score is way better, 0.43. It worked, it worked. That's pretty cool in itself, right? But I bet you I can do better as a human. I can do better if I go in here, right? And I edit this thing right here. If I were to come in here and start editing and put an Eiffel Tower at the front, like I teach, I teach this in the masterclass, how to do this exactly, I can do even better than ChatGPT. But if you want a quick fix, consider that. Maybe it works all the time, maybe it works half the time, but heck, that's a way better salient score. Now there's other tools we'll get into in other videos where you can push a lot of text. You can figure out what the entities are. And furthermore, you could even click in here to see what the knowledge graph, the knowledge base of what Google understands about this entity. What are the associations of this entity? What does Google actually think about it? But for now, the salient score is enough for you to bite off and really improve articles. Right, if you can show Google, yes, this section of the blog or this article has really high salience score. Like we understand this is what we're talking about. We're not getting distracted, right? You can have supplementary information further in the article and you should, but the top portions, man, they have to have high saliency. And like I said, I teach this in the masterclass. I show you actionable things to do, how to actually write these blog posts, how to go about structuring, interlinking, creating content hubs, all that stuff. So check that out if you're interested. At the very least, uh, join the newsletter. I send out about two newsletters a week. And we also have, what else do we have going on here? The uh, Word Galaxy suite is coming out. It has the quick article and the custom article workflow, which all the masterclass members have free access, free lifetime access to that. I have a link in the description uh, right now at the time of this video. It is free to use. We're in beta testing because the community has given us good suggestions on how to improve this. But nonetheless, I appreciate you watching. I hope this was helpful. This is getting very close to the sun. And like I said, the sun being Google's algorithm. Like I said, put your thinking caps on, rewatch this video. This matters so much. Stop writing rosy prose and just writing whatever you want. Focus on your keyword. Focus on the keyword and entities that are associated with them. But anyways, thank you for watching. Please subscribe, like it, send it to a friend. I don't know. 
do whatever you're going to do. Comment, tell me what you have going on. Love to hear from you. Appreciate everyone. Appreciate your kind words. And I'll check you on the next one.